Hello to my flamazing artist and welcome to Art with Miss P this week. So this week's lesson is going to be based on the book called Yoga Frog. It's written by Nora Carpenter and it's a fun little story about a frog who jumps up on his lily pad every morning and starts his day by doing some stretching and some yoga. So we're going to have fun drawing our own yoga frog. So here's a couple of examples that I had in the classroom this week. So here's our first frog standing on his lily pad in the pond and of course got some cattails and some grasses in the background doing a yoga pose. Here's another one of the same frog doing another yoga pose um, on the lily pad in his pond. So we're going to have a little bit of fun drawing a little cartoon of Yoga Frog doing some yoga. So what you need for this project is your white paper, your pencil, make sure you have an eraser, and a Sharpie if you have a black Sharpie. If not, you can use a black crayon or a black marker. And then whatever you want to color with. Now in the classroom, we used a combination of markers and crayons so we could get some nice uh, differentiation in tones. But you're free to use whatever you want to uh, color with. So grab those items, my friends. Meet me over in my studio and let's get started on our yoga frog. Hello friends and welcome to Art with Miss P. Okay, today we're gonna draw our yoga frog on a lily pad in a pond with some grass and cattails in the background that we normally see growing around the edge of ponds. This artwork is based on the book Yoga Frog. I put a link up to it in Google Classroom for you to listen to the read aloud and I also put up a page of different yoga poses so you could look at for reference if you want to draw a frog doing a different pose than what I'm going to show you today. So the way we draw the frog is the exact same way. The only thing you would change is the arms and the legs to alter your pose. So once you learn how to draw the basics of this frog, you can change the poses to anything you want. What you need for this project is a white piece of paper, your Sharpie, your pencil, and whatever you wanna color with. In this example, I use crayons and markers. So you can use whatever you wanna to use to color with. All right, so let's get our pencil and of course make sure you have an eraser and let's turn your paper vertical. The first shape we're gonna draw right here in the middle of our paper is a candy cane shape like this right here. Kind of like an upside down J. If I was to turn it this way, it would look like a backward J or the handle of an umbrella. So this candy cane shape right here is gonna be the head of our frog and this line right here is gonna be the back. So right here, we're gonna come right here and give him a smile. We're gonna give him two eyes, so I'm gonna make two circles. And if you wanna give your frog eyelashes, you can. I'm gonna give my frog two little eyebrows right there. But you can decide how you wanna do your frog's eyes. That will be up to you. For the stomach of Yoga Frog, we're gonna come right here under the mouth and we're gonna do a curved line out all the way down to right here. Kinda looks like a backward capital D. Then we're gonna draw a vertical line right here to divide the stomach and the back up. And that is the body of Yoga Frog. So this is how you would draw this cartoon of Yoga Frog every time you drew it. Now we're gonna draw the arms and the legs of Yoga Frog. So this frog is gonna do a pose, kinda like the warrior pose from um, yoga. We're gonna have the back leg straight and the front leg is gonna be doing a lunge. So we're gonna draw the back leg right here first and it's gonna be a diagonal line with a parallel diagonal line right behind it. Now, Yoga Frog has skinny legs, maybe not quite that skinny. So I'm gonna make his leg just a little bit fatter. Not too fat though. There we go, I like that better. And then I'm gonna bring this down a little bit longer and bring this across for his foot. And then we're gonna have one, two, three. A little zigzag line right there of three points. So there's his foot sitting flat on his lily pad. His front leg is gonna come out like this and then it's going to bend down like he's doing a lunge. 
and then we're gonna draw a parallel line right beside it, and it's gonna come down. And then we're gonna extend this line down a little bit, bring his foot out, and then a one, two, three. So there's his legs and his feet. All right, up here, his arm, we'll have one arm going back and one arm going forward. And then his little hand, one, two, three. Same thing here, one, two, and three. So there's Yoga Frog doing a lunge. Now to make it look like he's standing on a lily pad, we're gonna come back here and we're gonna draw a circle. And that circle's gonna come down here below his feet and come all the way back up. That's gonna be our lily pad. Now you can choose where to put this. It can be here, it can be here, or it can be here. But a lily pad is shaped kinda like this right here. Lily pads are round and then they have a cutout in them like this right here. And then from that point, here are the veins of the lily pad. And so we need to do this little cutout right here. So we're gonna put a cutout somewhere on your lily pad. I'm gonna put mine right here. And I'm gonna erase this line right here so it looks like my lily pad leaf just comes out and goes around. From this point, I'm gonna draw the veins on my lily pad like this. Now you don't wanna draw this line through your yoga frog because these go behind him so you won't draw this through his legs. And there's the veins of my lily pad and there's my lily pad. All right, so now let's give it a horizon line. So somewhere back here, you're gonna draw a straight line going across. Don't draw it through your frog. You'll just have to erase it. This is um, where the sky and the earth meet. So this right here is gonna be our pond. This is gonna be our sky. Right back here, just above our horizon line, we're gonna draw a slightly curved line. Now, I'm not drawing this line through my frog because my frog covers up that line. So if you draw it through it, then you'll just have to erase. All right, this is gonna be the edge of our pond. This is gonna be green. This is where we're gonna have a lot of grasses and cattails. Now, cattails are a special plant that grows around the edge of a pond. And they look, um, I put a picture up on Google Classroom so you could click on it and see. They're tall and skinny. And the, the flower part of the cattail is this long, skinny oval. Kind of looks like this. So this would look like the stem of a cattail right here. So it would be a long, skinny stem. Gonna erase that little part right there. And then on top is this long, skinny oval. And it's brown. And if you touch it, it's very fuzzy or furry feeling. And that's why they call them cattails. And they also have these long, skinny leaves that come off of them. Long, skinny leaves that come off. And they're green, and this part of the cattail is brown. You see them along the edges of ponds. So we're going to draw some tall grasses back here. You can decide how many cattails you want, how much grass you want to grow. Um, I'm going to put a few cattails, and I'm going to have them all different um, height. Some are going to be short, some are going to be tall, and I think I'll put another one right here, but you can put your cattails anywhere you want to put them. And I'm erasing right here because our stems overlap this line right here. So I'm going to put a leaf right here, and I'm going to erase right there because that leaf covers it, and then I'm going to put a really long leaf right there. And then I'm just gonna fill in the area right back here with some grasses. And these grasses can be tall, they can be short, they can go different directions. I think I'll have one go right here. I think I'll have one go off the page right there. And maybe have one coming up behind Yoga Frog. Now I crisscrossed these right here, so I've got to decide which one's gonna be in the front. So I am going to make this one in the front. So I'm gonna erase everything inside there so I get my overlapping right. So you wanna make sure your overlapping is correct, friends. All right, so I've got some 
nice green grasses that you see growing along the edge of our pond. If you wanna put a sun in your sky, you can. If you wanna put clouds in the sky, you can. The choice is yours. Now down here in our pond, I'm gonna put a few little bumpy lines like this right here to represent ripples in the water. That's where when you look at water, and any movement, you'll see these little ripples going across the water. So I'm gonna put those little um, ripples right there. Now I am ready to Sharpie. So get your Sharpie, trace over all your pencil lines in Sharpie, making sure that you take your time and do it neatly. And when you finish with your Sharpie, don't forget, you're gonna erase those pencil lines that your Sharpie did not cover. So let's get our Sharpie done. Okay, friends, so we've got our Sharpie done, and I also went back after I finished my Sharpie and erased any pencil lines that my Sharpie did not cover. So, you know, that's making our artwork neat and having good craftsmanship. So make sure you use your eraser and erase any pencil lines that your Sharpie didn't cover. So let's talk about color a little bit. All right, in this picture, we're gonna be using a lot of greens, a lot of cool colors. Our lily pad is gonna be green, our frog is gonna be green, our grasses back here in the background is gonna be green, and this area along the edge of the pond is gonna be green, and of course our pond is gonna be blue. So we've got a lot of cool colors in here. Um, so be careful when choosing your greens. You don't wanna do your frog and your lily pad the same color green. So try to choose different greens. Back here, I chose a variety of greens. Also, I switched off with crayons and markers so I could have some greens and blues, but it'd be a different tone so it wouldn't blend in so much. Now, you do have a choice on the sky. You can do a nice, beautiful blue sky if you want to. That is fine. But if you remember in the book, Yoga Frog gets up and does his yoga first thing in the morning. So his sky might be kind of pinkish, reddish, oranges, the color of the sunrise. So that would be a nice different color to contrast all these cool colors because the morning sky is those nice, beautiful, warm colors of reds and oranges and yellows and pinks. So you could do that in your sky if you wanted to. So whatever you choose to color with, just make sure you are coloring neatly, you are inside your lines, pay attention to your greens, you don't want the same green side by side so things blend in. And I look forward to seeing your yoga frogs. So until next time, friends, peace, love, and sparkles from Miss P.